Good evening. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Renuka Aris with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says glory of Sanatan Bharat and glow of modern India should mark celebrations of 75 years of India's independence. Chair's first meeting of National Committee to commemorate Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Prime Minister lists five pillars, freedom, ideas, actions, achievements and resolve to celebrate 75 years of independence. Both Houses of Parliament witness multiple adjournments amid uproar over fuel price hike. International Women's Day being celebrated today. President, Vice President and Prime Minister greet women on the occasion. Prime Minister buys products from women enterprises to celebrate their creativity and India's culture. Senior leaders of various political parties file nomination papers for first phase of assembly polls in Assam. Five Trinamool Congress MLAs join BJP ahead of assembly elections in West Bengal. Home Ministry hands over probe of explosive laden car found near industrialist Mukesh Ambani's residence to INA. All helpline numbers of railways merged into single number 139 for queries, complaints and assistance. Results of JEE Main's February 2021 session to be released in a few hours from now. And in hockey, Indian men beat Great Britain 3-2 in fourth and final match of Europe tour in Belgium. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that celebration of 75 years of independence should be one such festival in which the spirit of freedom struggle, tribute to the martyrs and their pledge to create India could be experienced. Mr. Modi said this festival should embody the glimpse of the glory of Sanatan Bharat and also the glow of modern India. The Prime Minister said this while chairing the first meeting of the National Committee to commemorate 75 years of independence, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, virtually today. Prayas ye hai ki kaise Azadi ke 75 saal ka ye ayojan, Azadi ka ye Amrit Mahotsav, Bharat ke jan jan ka, Bharat ke har man ka parva bane. Saathiyo, Azadi ke 75 saal ka ye parva, एक ऐसा पर्व होना चाहिए जिसमें स्वाधीनता संग्राम की भावना उसका त्याग साक्षात अनुभव हो सके जिसमें देश के शहीदों को श्रद्धांजलि भी हो और उनके सपनों का भारत बनाने का संकल्प भी हो The Prime Minister said this event will also showcase our achievements of these 75 years to the world and also give a framework for resolution to us for the next 25 years he said 75 years of India's independence should be celebrated through participation of 130 crore Indians and the people's participation is at the core of this celebration. अब दूर नहीं है हम सब इसके स्वागत में खड़े हैं ये वर्ष जितना ऐतिहासिक है जितना गौरवशाली है देश के लिए जितना महत्वपूर्ण है देश इसे उतनी ही भव्यता और उत्साह के साथ मनाएगा ये हमारा सौभाग्य है कि समय ने देश ने इस अमृत महोत्सव को साकार करने की जिम्मेदारी हम सबको दी है मिस्टर मोदी इन्फॉर्म्ड दैट फाइव पिलर्स हैव बीन डिसाइडेड फॉर द सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ द 75 इयर्स दीज आर फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल आइडियाज एट 75 अचीवमेंट्स एट 75 एक्शंस एट 75 एंड रिजॉल्व एट 75 all these should include the ideas and feelings of the 130 crore Indians. Various members of the National Committee attended the meeting. The members of the National Committee who gave inputs and suggestions to the meeting included former President Pratibha Devi Singh Patil, former Prime Minister H.D. Deve Gowda, Naveen Patnayak, Malikar Jun Kharge, Meera Kumar, Sumitra Mahajan, J.P. Nadda and Maulana Wahiduddin Khan. The members of the committee thanked the Prime Minister for the planning and organization of the Azadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav. 
They gave their suggestions and inputs to further expand the scope of the Mahotsav. The Union Home Minister said that there will be more such meetings in the future and suggestions and inputs received today will be considered. Both Houses of Parliament today witnessed multiple adjournments amid uproar over fuel price hike. The Rajya Sabha was adjourned for the day amid the protest and sloganeering of the Congress MPs over the issue of rise in fuel and LPG prices. As the House met after the first adjournment at 11 a.m., the leader of opposition, Malikarjun Kharge, demanded to discuss the issue, which was rejected by the Deputy Chairman of Rajya Sabha, Hari Vansh, saying that the matter cannot be discussed. Earlier on the first day of the second leg of the budget session, Congress leader Malikarjun Kharge raised the issue of rise in fuel and LPG prices, saying that people are suffering due to the price rise. The Lok Sabha was adjourned for the day following disruption by the opposition over the rise in prices of fuel and LPG cylinders. When the House met at 7 p.m. after second adjournment, members from Congress, TMC, DMK, BSP, NCP and others again trooped into the well, raising slogans against the government over the issue. Amid noisy scene, the House took up discussion on the calling attention over the issue of women empowerment. The Chair repeatedly urged the agitating members for order in the House but in vain. As the ruckus continued, the House was adjourned for the day. Earlier when House met at 5 p.m., Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla rejected the adjournment notices given by some opposition members over the issue, saying it can be raised during discussion on the finance bill. This prompted opposition members, including Congress, TMC, DMK, Shiv Sena and the BSP to troop into the well of the House. As the ruckus continued, the House was adjourned till 7 p.m. The Speaker also announced tomorrow onwards the House will commence its sitting from 11 a.m. The Parliament will resume its normal 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. sitting from tomorrow. The decision was taken today in the meeting of the Business Advisory Committee of both the Houses with members from across 20 political parties attending the meet. The members of both the Houses will be seated in their respective chambers and galleries. Due to COVID-19, the two Houses had adopted staggered timings with Rajya Sabha sitting from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. while Lok Sabha functioning from 4 p.m. till 9 p.m. In Assam, several senior leaders of various political leaders submitted their nomination papers today for the first phase of assembly polls. Polling will be held on 47 seats on the 27th of this month in the first phase. Tomorrow is the last date of filing nomination papers in this phase. State Congress President Ripun Bora, Ahom Ghana Parishad President Atul Bora and Executive President Keshav Mahanta submitted their nomination papers. Jailed leader of Raijor Dal, Akhil Gogoi, also filed nomination today. Senior BJP leader and Speaker of the State Assembly, Hitendra Nath Goswami, also filed the nomination. Handloom and Textile Minister Ranjit Datta filed nomination from Bihali seat. President of Assam Jatiya Parishad, Luran Jyoti Gogoi and Senior Leader of the Party, Jagdish Bhuyan, also filed their nomination today. Ahead of the Assembly elections in West Bengal, five Trinamul Congress MLAs, including the former Deputy Speaker of the State Legislative Assembly, Sonali Guha, joined the BJP today. The other four MLAs are Rabindranath Bhattacharya, Jatu Lehri, Sheetal Sardar and Dipen Dubiswas. All of them joined the BJP at Kolkata this afternoon in presence of State BJP Chief Dilip Ghosh. Senior leaders Mukul Roy and Subhendu Adhikari were also present there. None of them were given tickets for the ensuing assembly elections by the TMC chief Mamata Banerjee when she announced the names of 291 candidates for all eight phases of polling in the state last week. Sarala Murmu, the earlier candidate of TMC from Habibpur seat, also joined the BJP today. TMC changed their candidate this morning and named Pradeep Baske in place of Murmu. The BJP today issued a list of two candidates for ensuing assembly polls in West Bengal and Assam. Party has fielded Kamla Kanta Hansada from Kashipur in West Bengal and Rupesh Gowala from Dumduma in Assam. The BJP today also announced AP Abdullah Kutti as its candidate for the bipole to Mallapuram Lok Sabha seat in Kerala. In Kerala, tomorrow is the last date for voters to add their names to the electoral rolls for the upcoming assembly elections. A supplementary list shall be published with newly added names. Any citizen who have attained 18 years of age as on 1st of January this year can add their names to the roll. 
The Union Home Ministry today handed over the investigation into the explosive-laden car found near industrialist Mukesh Ambani's residence in Mumbai to the National Investigation Agency, NIA. The NIA would investigate the entire matter and will take over the probe from the Maharashtra Anti-Terrorism Squad. About 20 gelatin sticks and a threat letter addressed to the Ambani family was recovered from a Scorpio car on 25th of February. Days later, the body of the owner of the vehicle, identified as Mansukh Hiren, was fished out from the Mumbra Creek in Tane. International Women's Day is being observed today, the day celebrated on the 8th of March every year to help forge a gender-equal world, celebrate women's achievements and their increasing visibility in every sphere of life. The theme this year is Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World. President Ramnath Kovind, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi greeted women on the occasion. In his message, President Ramnath Kovind called upon everyone to dedicate the International Women's Day to the honour, safety and empowerment of women and resolve that we will support them in changing every tradition and policy that hinders their progress. Vice President and Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu complimented the role of women on the occasion. On the first day of the second part of the budget session, Mr. Naidu said, a nation cannot make progress without the progress of women. In his message, the Prime Minister said, women are playing a leading role in India's quest to become Atmanirbhar. On International Women's Day, Prime Minister Modi urged people to commit to encourage entrepreneurship among women. The Prime Minister said today, he himself bought a few products to celebrate women enterprise, creativity and India's culture. All India Radio News spoke to one such woman entrepreneur from whom the Prime Minister bought a product. My name is Neetu Mani Gogoi. As Narendra Modi Sir has bought a product for the Gamusa. It is very good to see us. The Gamusa has prepared for us for the Gamusa. In Madhya Pradesh, International Women's Day is celebrated with great enthusiasm. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, as a mark of respect to Nari Shakti, purchased handcrafted Gond tribal paper painting from tribes India, Bhopal. More from our Bhopal correspondent. On International Women's Day, Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan began the day by holding talks over tea with women. He first greeted the women sanitation workers. He also informed the women cleaning workers about the schemes being run for the welfare of women. Chief Minister's security was also managed by women staff today. He greeted women security force, women SDM and all women staff deployed for his security. In the state assembly also, a woman MLA from Madhya Pradesh presided over the question hour. Juma Solanki, the Congress MLA from Bhikan Gaon, presided over the question hour on the occasion of International Women's Day. Pooja Pivardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. The Uttar Pradesh government today launched the second phase of Mission Shakti on the occasion of International Women's Day. Launching the campaign, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath said that it will become a milestone in women empowerment. Our correspondent reports, first commercial flight from Bareilly also started today. After a gap of 24 years, first commercial flight was flagged off by Union Minister for Civil Aviation, Hardeep Singh Puri, virtually. The flight was operated by all women crew members carrying 60 passengers to Delhi. With this flight, Bareilly became 8th city in state with flight services on 4 days in a week to Delhi within 2000 rupees. Under Mission Shakti campaign, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath inaugurated women special police stations in 18 districts along with pink booths and pink toilets. On the occasion of International Women's Day, the first Adarsh Mahila Barrack in Mahila Thana of Muzaffar Nagar was also inaugurated today. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. On the occasion of International Women's Day, all major news bulletins in English and Hindi at News Services Division of All India Radio in New Delhi were broadcast and edited by women news readers and editors. The News Services Division also broadcast program based on Women Achievers under Nari Shakti, Desh Ki Shakti and Women on the Move in its Spotlight program. This International Women's Day, AIR News brings you a special 15-minute program, Women on the Move, highlighting the achievements of women in a diverse range of fields. Tune in to the spotlight on FM Gold 100.1 MHz at 9.15 p.m. on 8th of March to listen to this program highlighting the grit, determination and success of Indian women. The 
World News put a special focus on Indian women making their mark in the global arena. These programs are being broadcast at all the regional news bulletins across the country in various regional languages. As part of a series of International Women's Day, today we bring you the story of a woman influencer from the field of defense and administration. On 7th of February this year, a disaster struck the Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. A huge glacier burst in Tapovan area triggered a flash flood which resulted in massive destruction. The district magistrate of Chamoli, Swati Bhadoria, played a significant role in the rescue mission. Here is a report. As soon as the news broke, Swati Bhadoria, DM Chamoli immediately rushed to the spot for crisis management. Under her able administration and with the help of several other central teams, many lives were saved. The rescue work is still on to trace the missing people. Talking to All India Radio News, Ms. Bhadoria recalled the incident. At around 10.40, I was informed that an avalanche has hit the villages of Reni and Tapovan in our district and I immediately rushed for the spot. When I left, I did not have any idea of the intensity and while on the way, I spoke to the SDM and others and uh, I got to know that uh, more than 150 people might have been affected by this. Ms. Badhoria says women should have faith in themselves and should give their best in whatever they do. Diksha Saxena, AIR News, Delhi. Celebrating 50 years of the liberation of Bangladesh and historic friendship between India and Bangladesh, two naval ships from India arrived in Dhaka on Sunday on a three-day program. Our Dhaka correspondent has sent this report. Two ships of the Indian Navy arrived at the port city of Mongla in Bangladesh today on a port call between March 8th and 10th. The ships INS Kulish and INS Sumedha were given a ceremonial welcome by the Bangladesh Navy on their arrival in Mongla. They are visiting Bangladesh to commemorate the ongoing Swarnim Vijay Varsh and to reiterate the historic India-Bangladesh friendship. This is the first time that any Indian naval ship is visiting the port of Mongla to pay homage to the Bangladeshi and Indian combatants and citizens who laid down their lives during the Liberation War of 1971. Rajesh Jha, AIR News, Dhaka. The Indian Railway has integrated all railway helplines into single number 139, which is Rail Mudded Helpline for quick grievance redressal and inquiry during the journey. As a new helpline number 139 will take over all the existing helpline numbers, it will be easy for the passengers to remember this number and connect with the railways for all their needs during the travel. The Ministry of Railways in a statement said that various railway grievance helplines were discontinued last year and now helpline number 182 would also be discontinued from 1st of April 2021 and will be merged into 139. Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank has said in a tweet that result of the Joint Entrance Examination JEE Main February 2021 session will be released by the National Testing Agency NTA in a few hours from now. A total of 6,52,000 candidates who have applied to appear for Paper 1 can check the results through the websites nta.ac.in, ntaresults.nic.in, and jwemain.nta.nic.in. Paper 1 is held for admissions to BE or BTEC courses. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. <laughs> Welcome back. Now here is a review of proceedings in the Parliament today. First from Rajya Sabha. The writer is Sanjeev Chopra of the PTI. The Rajya Sabha has witnessed repeated adjournments on the first day today of the second phase of the budget session with the opposition Congress demanding a discussion on the hike in petroleum products. The House faced four adjournments till it was adjourned finally for the day. Leader of the opposition, Malikarjun Kharge, gave a notice for suspension of business in the House to discuss what he called a huge and frequent increase in prices of petrol, diesel and LPG, even when global prices are ruling low. 
Chairman M. Venkaiya Naidu disallowed his notice but suggested him to make a mention of the matter. But however, he said the issue can be debated during the course of discussion on the appropriation bill. Describing the issue as a burning subject, Mr. Kharge said people are agitating in the country and they have been given an opportunity to raise the issue in the House. Mr. Kharge insisted on his demand for a discussion, noting that the people are suffering. Following this, Congress members raised an uproar. The upper house was first adjourned for a few minutes after 10 a.m. till 11 a.m. and then again till 1 p.m. Thereafter, it was adjourned in quick succession for 15 minutes each at 1 p.m. and then at 1.15 p.m. till it was finally adjourned for the day. The opposition members continued to raise slogans demanding a debate with the chair urging them to return to their seats and allow the house to function. He also asked the opposition members not to make fun of democracy and not to use unparliamentary words. Today, being the International Women's Day, the chairman lauded the role of women and said it is time to celebrate the social, economic, cultural and political contributions and achievements of women across the globe and honour their indomitable spirit. Mr. Naidu said it is a day to take stock of the hurdles coming in the way of ensuring women their due in all walks of life and socio-economic development. Mr. Naidu appreciated the services rendered by women for the development and prosperity of the nation. He also underlined the need to ensure an environment that allows women to express themselves to their full potential in the form of both words and deeds. Several women members also spoke on the occasion, with some demanding reservation for women in the parliament and the state assemblies to enable them to get adequate representation. Chaya Verma of the Congress recalled former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi for providing reservations to women in the local bodies. Her party colleague, Fulo Devi Netam, said even though the government has given a slogan, Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao, women do not feel secure. Saroj Pandey of the BJP highlighted measures like the law against triple talaq taken by the government to empower women. She said the sex ratio in the country has improved after the government's Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao campaign. Priyanka Chaturvedi of the Shiv Sena said, since women comprise half the population, they should be given 50% representation in the parliament and the state assemblies and not just 33%. Sampatia Uike of BJP said there are 78 women MPs in the Lok Sabha and 27 in the Rajya Sabha and asserted that women are getting opportunities in all spheres of life. Dr. Fazia Khan of NCP said the beginning could be made by bringing the legislation on the 33% reservation for women in both the Houses of Parliament. Dr. Ami Yagnik of the Congress, Seema Dwedi and Sonal Mansing, both of the BJP, also spoke on the occasion. The Rajya Sabha shall also resume normal working hours from tomorrow. The Upper House was meeting for five hours from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. during the budget session due to COVID-19 restrictions. Vandana Chavan, who was in the chair at 1.30 p.m. when the House met again, announced that on the requests received from many members from various parties, the chairman has decided that from tomorrow, the sitting of the Rajya Sabha will commence from 11 a.m. up to 6 p.m. as per usual timings of the House. Later, she adjourned the House for the day. Earlier, when the House met, Biswajit Daimari from Assam, Dinesh Chandra Jamal Bhai Anwarwadia and Ram Bhai Harji Bhai Mukaria, both from Gujarat, took oath of the office. The chairman also made obituary references to former members of the House, Vidya Sagar Nishad, M. J. Rama Joy, and Satish Sharma, who died during the intervening period of the budget session. The chairman also gave an account of the examination of the demands for grants for 2021-22 of various ministries undertaken by the department-related parliamentary standing committees of the Rajya Sabha during the three-week recess after the first part of the ongoing budget session of the parliament. Mr. Naidu informed the House that the eight committees of Rajya Sabha have spent 12% more time this year on examination of demands for grants of 18 ministries over that of last year. He said these committees have held 21 meetings for a total duration of 70 hours 27 minutes this year as against 20 meetings for a duration of 63 hours last year. The chairman urged the members to make effective use of the parliament library for making a difference to the debates. He noted that going to the library is going to enhance your knowledge. Attending the session and not missing it also enhances the understanding of the parliamentary procedures, he said. And now review of proceedings in the Lok Sabha. Writer is Kumar Rakesh of the PTI. 
The second part of Parliament's budget session began today. The Lok Sabha was, however, first adjourned for one hour after paying tribute to two sitting and seven former members who died recently, and then again due to opposition's protests over the rise in petroleum and gas prices as they demanded a discussion. Speaker Om Birla then adjourned the House till 7 p.m. after his request to protesting opposition members to go back to their seats and allow the House to resume its proceedings went unheeded. During the protests, the Speaker announced that the House will meet from 11 a.m. from tomorrow, as was the practice before the timing was shifted to 4 p.m. due to COVID-19 protocols. He also conveyed Lok Sabha's regards to women for their achievements and contribution to the nation to mark the International Women's Day today. Mr. Birla announced that women parliamentary parliamentarians will run the proceedings today to mark the day before he adjourned it due to protests. When the Speaker Om Birla rejected notices of adjournment motion moved by opposition members over the rise in petroleum and cooking gas prices, they started raising slogans. Mr. Birla repeatedly appealed to the protesting members to let the House function so that women members can raise their issues on International Women's Day, but around 5.15 p.m. he adjourned Lok Sabha till 7 p.m. Earlier, the House was adjourned for an hour after paying tributes to the two sitting and seven former members who died recently. He allowed a few members to raise their issues amid protests. Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary of the Congress demanded that the government push a bill for women reservation in the Parliament. Harsimrat Kaur Badal of the Akali Dal raised the issue of hike in fuel prices, saying it impacts women a lot. She also attacked the Congress, saying the VAT on petroleum prices is very high in Punjab, which is ruled by the opposition party. Lok Sabha proceedings began at 7 p.m. amid protests by opposition with Rama Devi in the chair. Speaker Om Birla had decided that women member will chair the proceedings to mark the International Women's Day. Bidi Satyavati of YSR Congress highlighted several measures taken by Andhra Pradesh government for the welfare of women. BJP Sangapitra Maurya and independent member Navneet Kaur hailed women's contribution in their speeches. Satabdi Roy of TMC said the society needs to be more sensitive towards women. She stressed the need to eradicate dowry system in the country. The House, however, could function only for a short period and the chair adjourned the House till tomorrow. And that's all in Parliament Review. In some more news, uh, in men's hockey, India beat Great Britain 3-2 in a closely contested match at Antwerp in Belgium today. Striker Mandeep Singh scored the all-important goal in the last minute of the game. It was India's fourth and final match of the Europe Tour. Earlier on Saturday, India's previous match with Great Britain ended in a 1-1 draw. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. In National Capital Delhi, the temperature will hover between 17 and 32 degrees Celsius. In Mumbai, the minimum temperature will be 19 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be around 36 degrees. Srinagar will have partly cloudy sky. Temperature will hover between 5 and 14 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have partly cloudy sky, becoming generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening. The minimum temperature will be 15 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 28 degrees Leh is expected to have partly cloudy sky. Minimum temperature will be around minus 5 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 7 degrees. Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky. Muzaffarabad will have partly cloudy sky, becoming generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening or night. In Dehradun, the minimum temperature will be 15 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 30 degrees. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says glory of Sanatan Bharat and glow of modern India should mark celebrations of 75 years of India's independence. Chair's first meeting of National Committee to commemorate Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Prime Minister lists five pillars, freedom, ideas, actions, achievements and resolve to celebrate 75 years of independence. Both Houses of Parliament witnessed multiple adjournments amid uproar over fuel price hike. International Women's Day being celebrated today. President, Vice President and Prime Minister greet women on the occasion. Prime Minister buys products from women enterprises to celebrate their creativity and India's culture. Senior leaders of various political parties file nomination papers for first phase of assembly polls in Assam. Five Trinamul Congress MLAs join BJP ahead of assembly elections in West Bengal. Home Ministry hands over probe of explosives-laden car found near industrialist Mukesh Ambani's residence to NIA. All helpline numbers of railways merged into single number 139 for queries, complaints and assistance. 
Results of JWE Mains February 2021 session to be released in a few hours from now. And in hockey, Indian men beat Great Britain 3-2 in fourth and final match of Europe tour in Belgium. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.